Hey everyone, welcome to your very first class, uh, class of multivariate statistics. Um, so we are going to be working a lot in R in this class. Uh, so we are going to spend the first two weeks working on some basic fundamental concepts in R. So some of the things to do before we uh, start, uh, before we get into the details of R. So make sure that you've installed R Studio. Uh, for my Mac users, I would recommend working on R Cloud. So in spring semester, uh, a lot of students who had Mac computers ran into a lot of issues regarding uh, installing libraries in R. And most of these problems can be uh, avoided if you just work on R Cloud. Uh, I would recommend anyone to work on R Cloud. Um, there's no need to take up uh, all the space on your own computer. Uh, however, for Mac users, I especially recommend working on R Cloud. And finally, uh, everyone should um, uh, familiarize themselves with R Markdown. So all of the homeworks or most of the homeworks will be submitted um, uh, via R Markdown. Um, so I will share a video by Professor Dalzell uh, for, uh, that gives an introduction um, to how to install R Markdown and how to work with it. So this is for those who have never worked with this before. So some of the things to keep in mind before we start uh, thinking about writing any kind of code in R. So it's always good to be mindful of the directory. So the directory is basically a folder. So say I want to write some code to analyze a particular data set. So it's important that I have to first set my directory uh, to that folder. So R is able to access that data set. So always when before you start working on anything, make sure or be mindful of your working directory. Um, so in this course, it would make sense to create a separate folder altogether um, where you can store all the R material related to this class, right? And so anytime you work on any project related to this class, you will just set your directory to that particular folder. This also makes sure that all of your stuff related to this course is in one place and it will make it easier for you to find all of this material later on. Another thing to have at the back of your head is the folder name. Now I know it sounds really basic, uh, but it's important that you name your folder in an informative way. Uh, I imagine you have a lot of other courses for which you also might, uh, which, which also might involve a lot of coding. Um, so you should be able to guess the contents of the folder by its name. Um, so for this course, it would make sense to name the folder as multi-period analysis, or maybe you can name it after the course code. So how do you check your working directory, right? So there is this command get wd. So this will tell you what your current working directory is. So anytime you open R, uh, this is what you want to check and make and you want to make sure that the working directory is the right one. If it is not the right working directory, then we want to set it to the right one. Now, how do we do that? So this is my R studio. Uh, so let me clear this. I was just working on our markdown before this. Uh, okay, so this, so this is my current working directory. Uh, now suppose I don't want to be in this directory because all of my stuff that I want to work on in is, is in some other folder. So I want to change this directory. So I'll go to this part uh, of our studio and you can see these three dots here right um, so when I hover over the dots um, you can see go to directory pops up so I'll click on that these are all of my folders obviously this, this looks different for uh, each one of you so I go to Dropbox I I don't know pick some 
random folder and suppose this is where I want to work. So basically, if I set this to be the working directory, R can access everything that is inside here. So I selected that folder, I opened it, then I go to this more button and I select set as working directory. So now if I do get WD, you see this is my current working directory. So anytime you work on anything, always check whether your working directory is the right one. And if it's not, then set it to the right one. Uh, another thing, so now once you open and set your working directory, then you'll start working on your code, then you need to save that piece of code, right? So you basically need to uh, name your file appropriately. Um, so if you're just going to write one or two codes or one or two files, it doesn't matter what the names are. But in this course, we'll be uh, writing a lot of codes and it's important that you name your files uh, uh, in a sensible way. So if you're working on homework one, maybe you want to name your file as homework one. If Maybe if you're creating a file that has a function to calculate the covariance matrix, then I would name it as covariance. Uh, I would name the file as covariance. So all I'm trying to say is by looking at the names, you should be able to tell the contents of that file. Uh, trust me, there will be a lot of files that you'll have by the end of this uh, semester. And uh, if you cannot identify the files, you're going to have a hard time. Another thing is maybe a year or two from now, you might want to look at some code or something. So you should be then able to access this easily as well. And finally, uh, this is a point that I've been stressing a lot uh, in my spring semester, but somehow um, uh, students have not necessarily followed it. Uh, but this is more of a convenience thing. So basically, if you're developing a code, I would recommend you use R Studio, and then you copy paste it in R Markdown. Um, so it's just because the only reason is that it is easier to debug in R Studio than it is to debug in R Markdown. So you are going to finally be submitting all of the codes in R Markdown. Um, so it makes so that's why I guess a lot of students work directly in R Markdown, but it's just that debugging is easier on R Studio. What do I mean by this? This is my R script. I will write my code here. I'll make sure that it runs correctly. Then I can copy paste this piece of code. And this is my R Markdown file. And then I can, you know, put my copy paste my piece of code here. So when I put it here, finally, I know that it works properly and I don't need to debug it. So that is all for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.